Welcome back everybody. Tonight I want to work on kind of getting this bell housing cleaned out, get all the clutch components out of here. Uh, and then I want to bring in a vacuum to clean up all this debris that we have, the rust scale. We're also going to need the vacuum in the back over that rear differential and then we'll also need it again when we get to the clutch on the main motor. So let's get started getting this apart here. So on the other side of this casting is a frost plug from the outside and this whole works can kind of migrate in. You can see we came off of that ball there so we can get those two by each other here. At least with those two apart, we can pull this cotter pin down here, get this out of the way, worry about cleaning this linkage up later, and then we'll have to see about getting this out of here. So just looking at this again, I believe if we just, yep, right there. So that's out. So we'll grab that cotter pin and keep that for a reference for a size when we go back together. I believe that's supposed to be a return spring for the clutch. Not looking too healthy anymore. And there it is. Just a quick side note, was able to get that other roller out, same process as that one, just heated the outside. I did get it to move, really wasn't stuck too bad, but once again I think I will end up putting new pins in it, no big deal. that clean let's move on to the back there with everything cleaned up we're gonna try and get this rear shaft out of here, which involves both steering clutches, pulling that bevel drive off, or the, not the bevel drive, but the cover for the bevel gears. And to get these brakes loose, there's a pin here that runs all the way through. And if you read in the book, that is how they recommend you pull the brake shoes or brake bands with the entire shaft is one. So I think that's where we're going to start and see what kind of hiccups we run into. So first off we need to get that bolt out there. It's a 3 8 bolt. This bolt here holds this locking tab in. That tab is cut into that pin. That pin is threaded on the end. You can put like a slide hammer in there to try and draw that pin out. 
So we'll see what happens. All right, with that bolt out, let's take a brass drift here. Get that locking collar loosened up. Pull that out of there. I know we're jumping around here a little bit. It's kind of the nature of the beast when everything's stuck. But I started heating up the pin up in here because it did not move at all. And I figured I'll throw heat to this again. I did once, it didn't want to move. I said I'll try it again. Well, it's moving now. And I have that brake band backed off just a little bit. So I'm going to keep taking this one off to get more slack in there. And I'm going to try and go to the other side. See if we can get maybe these brake bands completely loose. We might be able to actually rotate this shaft all the way around. We'll see if the brake bands is what was actually causing the tracks to be stuck or if it's something else. So I'll continue on with this. We'll jump over to the other side. guys an idea of what we're taking off here basically it's just deep threads and deep thread adjuster for the brake shoes or brake bands with everything loosened up on both brake bands on each side I think what I'm going to try to do next is get these cotter pins out the book calls to pull this next and then to try to get this shaft out after this piece is out so in order to do that you need to remove this cotter pin here so that this can slide away to get this out so let's do that next so just a little tip for you guys on getting cotter pins out that you can't get to the back to drive out if you can't get anything like a pliers or anything on there to grab it another trick that works is find a punch that'll fit inside that hole and come in with a pry bar and of course i dropped it so with that cotter pin out of the way slide that washer forward and then we'll try to get this arm forward here. Well, I didn't get it on camera. I had the pry bar in right behind, just real lightly going between that washer. And I actually slid it right off of this needle bearing. So that's off. We should be able to pull that top shaft here. I'll show you. So we should be able to just pull this straight out. Uh, it is sticking just a little bit in there. We'll just go around to the other side with a brass drift. Just give it a little help. And just like that, it's out. So we will repeat the same process on the other side. So not to show you guys the same process over and over, but this side is a little more free moving. So we will see. If it wants to cooperate. Get 
that washer out of there. So it's definitely moving a lot easier than the other side. Just about there, just a little bit further. And just like that, it's out. Well guys, I went to take the pins out to remove these shafts. I was able to get that one out. But this one quit moving this way, so what I ended up doing is drilling the head out, and I'll drive it back down. Not a big deal, I'll have a pattern to make a new one, maybe I'll make two, just throw that pattern away. We'll see. Just a little fun fact for you guys. There's supposed to be threaded holes. What? Go lay down. There's supposed to be threaded holes in here that you can use to help get those shafts out. They're supposed to be filled with cork, like these holes here. But, I believe at one time someone had this machine apart and they either flip the shafts or they put in their own shafts because there's no threaded hole in there. Could make them interesting to get out of here. There's really not a great place to grab. Maybe I can get a bar in between here. We'll just have to see. Tell you what guys, this shaft here, it's really putting up quite the fight. It did end up heating it on both ends, and I do have it rotating, but I can't get it to move out at all. Um, I'll keep messing with it here, otherwise I may end up actually drilling and tapping the end of this to give me something to pull out against you know, put a bolt in here and then I can pry off of this big casting back here, try to get it to work its way out while I rotate it. We'll see. So just to keep everyone up to date on my plan here, I did go ahead and drill and tap that for a half inch 13 thread. I'm gonna try and put a bolt in here. I'll have to clean up these where I was trying to turn on this shaft here. But we'll get a bolt in there. And I got a slide hammer here. We're gonna see if we can get that to move out. Well, I got it to move about that far. I think I'm gonna end up making a puller that spreads that load over this casting and with a threaded rod that I can thread in there and actually pull it out while I'm just putting a little heat over here. And I almost guarantee we'll have to do the same thing to the other side. More than likely I'll end up making new pins for these anyway. Being that they are a bearing surface, there's needle bearings in here, or if I show you over here. I don't know if that's gonna clean up anyway. And it's really not that hard to get a hold of new shaft and drill a couple holes in it. So, 
just to keep you entertained here, I think we're going to pull this cover off and have a look inside and see what we find there. And we'll have to revisit pulling these uh, steering clutch shafts out. Let's go at these bolts here, show you what's underneath. Well, I won't lie to you guys, the bolts came out really easy, but actually breaking the cover loose took quite a bit of effort. And we're still stuck here. Let me get a pry bar back in there. It is loose. I think we're just fighting coming up square off of the studs here. Well, from what I'm seeing here, it will not clear right here. I can get it up high enough to just take a peek underneath, but until these steering shafts are out, we're not gonna see a whole lot. But what I do see looks promising. Well, sorry guys, I was hoping I could show you an overall view of everything here, but until we get these two shafts out and those components out of the way, this cover will not clear. I don't know if they change this design later on, but if you look, there's just a little lip that sticks out. You can just see the ledge of it down there. Even with this one all the way forward, it still contacts. So, I'll make a tool for this, we'll work on getting that one out, we'll bring you guys back in another video. Thanks for following along everybody, if you want to throw a like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one. What's going on with you two? Hmm? Shake? No. Hi Finny. Everyone, this is Finn and Milo. Milo is a husky mix. Wherever Finn went. Come here, Finn. Finn is a black German Shepherd. He's only about a year and a half old. Milo is three. Boys, sit down. Sit. Good boys.